an invitation like this to work in the three spaces of fruit market, my first impulse wasn't to make a new work. My first impulse was, God, there's so much work that people hadn't seen. I haven't counted it, but I think there's about 80 or 90% of the work in this exhibition has never been seen in the UK. So this idea of gathering some work from different places uh, that perhaps hadn't been seen here uh, and finding a way to exhibit it, but also without getting too kind of wrapped up in this idea of uh, kind of retrospective. I mean, all artists kind of uh, sort of recoil at the idea of a retrospective because you never think you're old enough to have a retrospective. How can I possibly have a retrospective at my young age? And you go, oh, actually. But um, I, yeah, and so in a way, what I wanted to allow myself to do was to gather all these elements, all these works, and then have fun with them and use them as sculptural elements that you then make another work from. It's something I've wanted to do for a long time in a space, in a gallery or a museum, is to play with this idea of um, the warehouse or the storage space, this kind of backstage condition, you know, that you have in theatre or in cinema or in galleries, uh, museums, where the work kind of, you know, goes when it's not on display. And how to exhibit work that's somewhere in between this condition of storage and being presented to the public, you know, when the work's maybe being checked or has just unwrapped. And quite often I found that exhibitions quite often look at their best, you know, two days before they're ready to go because they still have this strange sort of sense of potential. Uh, things are being changed and adapted and moved around. And there's, so there's like an energy there that's quite exciting. So there was a number of works that I immediately thought could be interesting for that works that somehow talk about a kind of in-between state. When the fire at Glasgow School of Art happened, you know, there was, of course, it was this really shocking moment. And I remember being phoned by a journalist, you know, the day after it happened and kind of talking about it. I was out walking and I was sort of talking about it and it just felt like it's like, you know, like something awful had happened to a relative or something that had this really strong like most of us did, we had this really strong reaction to this place that meant so much um, to the city and to anyone that's ever been in it. You know, it's, it's such an extraordinary building. And a couple of years, I guess, into the renovation, people were being invited to kind of see it, uh, you know, and in this sort of condition of being sort of brought back to life again. I took some photos and never really expected to do anything with them. And, but then I started to look at them and felt that perhaps there was something in this because it, it was as if the whole building was just sort of dusted in darkness. It had this sooty kind of blackness and, and there was something about the quality of the light in, in these sort of dark, burnt out spaces. And then of course the second fire happened. You realize that the, these photographs then sit in the middle. They mark this sort of moment of sort of renewal that's then completely kind of dashed by the second fire and so it, it, it really gave them a different sort of um, context and sort of potential meaning and, I, and so that in between this I thought was also quite an interesting thing and it felt quite uh, relevant to this uh, the warehouse and you know, how I was sort of playing with the warehouse space. The downstairs gallery I kind of wanted to use the gallery in this case as a gallery but almost play with the idea of an archetypal exhibition because um, I wanted to focus on wall-based works largely, which I've never really done before. I mean, I, I have made exhibitions of, which are primarily wall-based works, but then usually it's one series. And this is bringing work from, you know, from 1993 right up to the present. So this is a really new kind of, or, or an unusual way for me to work. I also wanted to create these partitions, so we made these, these frames with this corrugated glass fibre material that's usually used in roofing, but using the beams, the, the, the steel beams of, of the space to kind of anchor them into the space. And then at a certain point it sort of dawned on me that maybe I could, if I painted those beams and those pillars a different colour, then, then it almost becomes like a pavilion inside the room. 
Yeah, and, and, and I guess going back to this idea of the, you know bringing out the industrial history of of, of that building that, that's in that space, the things we try to make to usually try to make disappear, but to sort of bring them to the fore. Quite early on, I, I had this idea with the smallest room downstairs uh, was to create a kind of archive of uh, notes and models and drawings and things that you know, I, I, you know have been sort of part of the development of the work over the years. Um, I mean, the kind of holy grail, if you like, of, of that is this little black painted card model of the Martel concrete tree. So, and just to explain the. the uh, I mean, as far back as 2002, when I was working on another exhibition, uh, I came across an image of this concrete tree in a book on French modernist gardens. And I just became completely fascinated with th these objects. There's four of them, and they were made uh, for a garden by Robert Malley Stevens. And they were, the trees themselves were made by these brothers, uh, Jan and Joel Martel. And then there's also the very first model that I made of one of the ceiling sculptures of the canopy. And I was doing a project with Scottish Ballet in 2010. And I began to sort of really think about the music that they were dancing to. And there was this uh, Steve Reich uh, piece of music. And it was almost like a sort of pointillist composition. It was made up of these very kind of precise individual notes rather than swathes of orchestration. I, I, I was very aware of these individual notes being brought together to construct this composition. And it made me, for some reason, it made me think of this ceiling that I had seen uh, in, in a book uh, of um, the Communist Party headquarters in Paris, which was designed by Oscar Niemeyer. And this suspended ceiling is made up of hundreds and thousands of these rectangular aluminum fins. And somehow I began to wonder if I could marry something, the form of that ceiling with my, with the shapes that I was picking from the Martel concrete trees. There's something about looking at that vitrine and looking at this model of the canopy and, and then being up here underneath the underneath this, you know, geometric architectural blossom. Uh, and, and there's this sort of twelve year gap between one and the other, but the, the, the model downstairs is the absolute starting point, you know, the, the, the very beginning of, of what ended up here. I'm interested in using space and articulating space and, and, and how objects, you know, the, the placement of particular sculptural works can sort of generate an idea of place. I presented this moulding uh, before, uh, once in Glasgow at the Modern Institute and once in Berlin at Esther Schipper Gallery. And it's this very sort of simple sort of device that just gets applied to the walls, but it completely transforms the space into this, I don't know, sort of Fellini-esque bourgeois apartment. The ventilation grills, so the title of the piece in, in this exhibition is Ventilation Grills for an Apartment Building. and these are the first set of grills that I ever did. You know, the ventilation grill, it's this threshold. It marks the, the, the interior spaces that we occupy and the unseen guts of architecture. And so all these conduits and connected sort of pipes and things that, that, that happen, you know, backstage in a building. Uh, this, is a, this is the gateway for all that kind of space. Um, and so I was kind of interested in that. And then I was thinking about also in, in apartment buildings, you know, that we live, you know, all these different narratives are happening above you and below you, and your narrative is happening between all these other narratives. So this sort of way of somehow thinking about these multiple stories that happen in the city, um, and these being the connecting points, seemed like an interesting idea. I'm very interested in the sort of tension between what you know what we might call the, the, a sort of poetic or atmospheric feel for the work and then something harder more urban um, kind of industrial um, and so that's something that, that's really been from quite early on uh, in the work 
And I think maybe it's about countering something. It's like when I feel that the work is becoming too kind of, you know, poetic or atmospheric, that you have to find a way to sort of pull it back or, or counter or cut, cut through that with a, with a material. So, so I really like this, like painted steel, for example, that, that would come from, you know, industry powder coated steel, uh, using in, also my palette of colors is often these sort of industrial colors, very particular yellows, blacks and reds and pale blues. There's something about that uh, hard urban sort of feel, uh, but then through the work introducing something, you know, um, yeah, kind of almost, I don't know, sort of, sort of dreamlike. Uh, in it. And I suppose it's to do with, you know, how we deal with living in cities. There's such amazing sites for mythologies and romance and adventure and, and you know through cinema and literature we really um, we, you know we, we, we kind of go on those sort of journeys through the city and the city is such a site for these kind of things but of course also in the kind of everyday reality there's also this other there's these other things you know the, the, the boredom and the banality or the violence or whatever you know is also part of these places so it's trying to explore those things uh, somewhere between the the reality and and the, the sort of fiction of the city uh, through material and language as well.